Do you find yourself kind of stuck between using the print scriptures and the digital scriptures, your gospel library? There's things you love about both, but neither of them have all the features that you love. For example, I love the look and the feel of the print scriptures. When I see this page, I know I'm in sacred ground. And this is a, there's a sacredness to that because it feels like the scriptures. It looks like the scriptures. On the contrary, when you open up the gospel library, you don't get that. This is just raw text. It doesn't necessarily have that same look and feel. Another advantage of the print scriptures is if sometimes you remember where it was on the page, right? You may not remember the book or the chapter, but you remember that it was located at a, sp a specific place on the page. So as long as you're close, you can flip around until you find it right there where you knew it would be. You don't get that in the, the digital version. You got to open up the right chapter and scroll down until you find the verse. But there are some huge advantages to the digital scriptures. You can't argue with the convenience. They fit in our pockets. How many times, I can't tell you how many times I've been, you know, waiting in a doctor's office or waiting for a child at an appointment and I want to prepare a lesson or read over my come follow me. And so I pull out my scriptures from my pocket and I read them. Another advantage of the digital is ease of navigation. It's so easy to go right to the Book of Mormon, right to Alma, right to chapter 32, and boom, there I am in verse 21. It's just tap, 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 and I've, I've found, as opposed to flipping, kind of opening the page where you guess Alma is and being off by about 10 chapters and flip, 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 flip until I find it, and now I'm in the right place. Another advantage of the digital is unlimited space for notes. I think we would all admit that the margins of the print scriptures are not a great place to fill with your thoughts. If you write them down in ink, it bleeds onto the other page and there's just not a lot of room, as contrasted by the, print, the, the digital scriptures where I have unlimited room for thoughts and notes and pictures. Another thing I love about the digital scriptures is that I can link to other verses and even conference reports. If I'm in a particular place in the scriptures and something that a prophet or an apostle or someone in general conference really helped clarify that verse, I can create a link that takes me right to that conference talk. Or I can jump to other verses that are related. That's a huge advantage of the digital, is it instantly takes me there instead of having to flip to it. The problem is neither set has all of those advantages, the look and feel and the spatial layout of the print scriptures with all the tools of the digital and the convenience of the digital. So let me introduce you to another option. This is how I study the scriptures and I've loved it ever since I've discovered it. The PDF version of the scriptures. PDF meaning it maintains the look and feel. What you're looking at is actually my PDF scriptures. And they look just like the original. They're the PDF version, but it's electronic, digital, and it fits in my pocket. It fits on all of my devices. And now I have the advantage of both words. I still have the look and feel of the scriptures. And I can study them with a pencil in my hand just like I would my print scriptures. But I have all the tools of the digital scriptures. I can navigate quickly. I have unlimited space for notes. I can underline and the computer actually straightens the line for me. So I don't have any crooked lines. I can make perfect boxes and perfect circles. All of the advantages of the digital with the advantages of the print together. Now, in order to make it work, first you need a good note-taking app. And you can get a free one, but I would recommend paying a little bit of money and having one that has all of the best tools. My preferred app is GoodNote 6, but there are many. You can use all sorts of note-taking apps. What you're gonna see me using is GoodNote 6. There's a link in the description if you want to jump to it. There is a fee for it, but in my opinion, it's well worth the fee because this is a professional tool. 
Now, once you own the app, you need the PDF version of the scriptures from the church. Start by going to scriptures.churchofjesuschrist.org. And this is what that page looks like. All of the scriptures, I can open them up and I can study the scriptures online. So let's get to that PDF version. Let's start with the Book of Mormon since that's what we're studying this year. You may want to do this with all of these, but let's start with the Book of Mormon. So tap on the Book of Mormon and it opens up the digital version of the Book of Mormon. Now here's the secret. Over here on the right side, up at the top, are three vertical dots. When you tap on those, it unlocks this option to download. Now tap on download. And there it is. There's the PDF version. If I tap on that, it will open it up in a new window. Now, I'm not in my note-taking app yet, right? I'm still in the, uh, on my browser. In my case, I'm using my iPad Safari, and I'm going to export it to GoodNote 6. You may have different options, but it'll be a very similar process. So my first step is to export this or share this into GoodNotes. Now, this in Safari is my share button. It's a square with the arrow coming out. So I tap on that share button. Now I've got it set up where GoodNotes is already an option. That may be something you can do with your, whatever your note taking app is. It might be down here in the list, or you may need to just save it to files and then open it up with your note taking app. But in my case, I've already got GoodNotes set up. So I'm just gonna tap right on GoodNotes. It opens up GoodNotes and gives me the option to import this as a new doctrine document, which I definitely want to do. And now I have the Book of Mormon PDF version in GoodNotes, in my note-taking app. Now I'd recommend the very first thing you do is you change the title. Notice the title that came with it. Not very eye-friendly. So let's change that title. Let's just make it simply Book of Mormon. All right, Book. Uh, oh, I don't want that capitalized. Mormon. There we go. Now I've changed the title. Now I have the Book of Mormon, PDF version. Notice this looks like just any old Book of Mormon. Same look, same feel, same layout. There's the introduction, all the opening pictures, and we jump right to 1 Nephi chapter 1. Now, let's start with navigating, because you might be saying, wait a minute, I don't want to have, have to flip through the whole Book of Mormon a page at a time. You don't need to. In Good Notes, my option is right here in the top right corner, those four boxes. When I tap on that, it brings it up in thumbnail. That's kind of the default view, is it shows you a thumbnail of each page. But over here where it says outline, if I tap on that, it shows me the outline version. And now I can go straight to a book, straight to a chapter. Let's suppose I want to go back to Alma, chapter 32, and get to that great verse on faith in chapter 21. There it is. See how easy navigation is? I just tap on the four boxes again. If I want to jump, I just close the Alma verse. Let's say I want to jump to Moroni, chapter 7, and there's another wonderful chapter on faith, hope, and charity. So navigation, piece of cake in a digital, out, a, a, a digital app. Now let's start making some notes. Let's suppose I want to highlight that phrase that says faith, hope, and charity. So in my case, I have a highlighter, and I choose a size, and I choose a color, and I say faith, hope, and charity. Now did you notice what the, what the app did? It straightened the line. I didn't quite, let's see, I don't quite make a straight line, and I hold it it straightens the line for me. Oh, what a blessing that is, because I just like my lines nice and straight. So I can erase that. Now I've got faith, hope, and cherry. If I wanted my highlighter a little bit bigger, again, I can erase this and choose a different size from my highlighter. Faith, hope, and charity. If I want to underline instead of highlighting, I've got all sorts of options for underlining. I just choose again my color, faith. Notice it, straighten, will, no, no, it will straighten the line again. And let's suppose it wasn't quite straight. I can tap on it and just kind of move it around and make it perfect. If instead I wanted a box, watch me make a box. 
I just kind of draw, do my very best to draw a box, but then I hold it. And notice that the computer just perfectly straightens it. And then I can just adjust those lines. Now, this is not a commentary on how to use GoodNote 6. There's lots of videos that will show you how to use GoodNote 6. But now I have all of those tools, all of my note-taking tools. So let me just take you around. Let me get to my scriptures. Now, here are all the little, here are all my notebooks. Notice, number one is my Old Testament, number two, my New Testament, then my normal Book of Mormon, and then a clean blank copy that I'm reading for Come Follow Me. I just wanted a, a clean copy and start over. So there's my reading copy. I've got my Doctrine and Covenants, my Pearl of Great Price. Notice number six, I've got the latest issue of the Enzyme, and I do the same thing here that I do with the Scriptures. I open it up and I take notes. There's Elder Oaks' Kingdom, Kingdoms of Glory talk. But let me show you how I use the scriptures. Let me open up my Book of Mormon. Here, for example, is 1 Nephi chapter 8. Do you remember how we talked about the three different groups of people that Lehi mentioned? There I have highlighted them in different colors so I can quickly see them. There's the fours highlighted in, in blue. And I can jump right to the fours. If I want to see the threes, there they are in green. The, yellow, or the twos are in orange. The ones are in red. All of the tools of my note-taking app. And then, then I can go on YouTube, but I can watch tutorials on how to get better at that note-taking app with the PDF of the scriptures. It is the best of both worlds. I really like good notes because it allows me to put stickers in. For example, when I jump to 1 Nephi chapter 19, if I want to go quickly, let's go to 1 Nephi 20. Now that's an Isaiah chapter, right? So I put a box around the title, and then I put a little picture of Isaiah in the corner. So very quickly I can see that that's an Isaiah chapter. And I put a, blue, a brown bar across the whole chapter, so wherever I am, I know that I'm reading an Isaiah chapter. All of my note-taking, all of the things that I normally do with my, my print scriptures with a pen or a pencil or a scripture marker, and yet I'm in the digital version. It is the best of both worlds. And it opens up all sorts of libraries. For example, I have a whole folder here on prophets, seers, and revelators where I can put all of the talks given by President Nelson in order. So then I can just jump right to a specific talk, and I have all my notes for that particular talk. In my particular case, every time the prophet says, I plead, or I invite, or I urge, I put a picture of him so I can recognize that that is a prophetic counsel. I plead with you. I have all my different notes here. Let me take you back to my scripture folder. I love these classic documents like the King Follett Discourse, Lectures on Faith, The Letter from Liberty Jail, The Sermon in the Grove. And I've done the same thing. If I were to open up Lectures on Faith, you'll see that I have noted that just like I do my scriptures. And I can study it and I can use different colors and notice my lines are perfectly straight. That's the advantage of using this form, is I have all the advantage of the digital tools with the print version of the Scriptures. This is my preferred method of studying the Scriptures. It is the best of both worlds for me. It is the look and feel of the Scriptures, and yet all the tools of the digital. I love that when I'm teaching, I can actually zoom into a verse whereas I can't do that in the Gospel Library. I hope you enjoy this. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you try it out and decide that this is a marvelous thing, come back and leave a note in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful day.